It is Wednesday night. You guys are here for one thing, and that is to find out what is hot and cold in the comic book trend market right this minute. You are watching Simple Man's Comics. I'm your host, Brian Wood. With me, as always, is my co-host, Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. How you doing this evening, buddy? Oh, I'm doing real well. It's my favorite day of the week, new comic book day. New comic books are hitting the shelf. Back issues are flying off eBay. And we are here to talk about the hottest trends in the comic market, as well as some of the coldest and the best buying opportunities. Right. It's important to know that just because they're cold, a lot of times those are the best times to be picking these books up. So make sure you don't just watch the hot part, but the cold part as well. And while you're doing that, make sure you're clicking that thumbs up button for us and if you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe to this channel. That way you'll always be notified when a new video drops. It's also important to let you guys know this show is sponsored and it's by our good friends at CBSISwag.com. For all the great CBSI t-shirts like Jack's wearing right now, that awesome G.I. Joe Ahmed shirt, all that can be found at CBSISwag.com. The link to it is on the description. So make sure you check out CBSISwag.com for all your CBSI t-shirts, hats, hoodies, whole bunch of great apparel there but that's not all jack we also announced last week that we were doing a giveaway for a shirt and hat this week didn't we that's right we're trying to get one member of the youtube comic community swagged up hat and shirt courtesy of cbsiswag.com right and as we said to enter that contest you needed to comment on last week's video what your hot or cold picks were and we got a bunch of comments in there we took the best comments we threw them all in a list randomize that list and whoever is at number one at the end of the randomization is going to be the winner but before we announce the winner we do want to bring up some of the comments that we received on last week's video jam sessions his hot pick was x-men he said thanks hickman and his cold pick was dc and he said thanks bendis i agree with this hot pick we'll just say i don't totally necessarily agree with this cold pick what do you think about this comment jack well, I li again, I totally, like you said, I agree with the hot pick. I agree with the cold pick, maybe just not the reasoning. I think Bendis has actually been one of the shining stars for DC. Um, their books have just been cold across the, across the board, and we talk about the movie slate not really working out. Right. Then the next comment we got from Nick Leslie. He said, free hat. Okay, I'm in. Rob Liefeld is cold right now. Buy it up. It will be going up. So here is Nick Leslie doing like we always say, finding buying opportunities within a cold pick. Jack, I know you're a Liefeld homer. What do you think? I, I can't actually can't agree more. Um, Liefeld's Major X was red hot. It's gone down a good bit. Uh, copies are sitting cheap right now, and we know that there's more Major X coming. So now is a great buying opportunity. Then one of the next comments we got was from Strange Tales to Collect. His hot pick, Virgin Variants. Been crushing the game for a while now. His cold pick, C through Z trade dress variant covers for big new series releases. Consistently underperformers. I agree with him. It's one thing we mentioned a lot. A lot of these trade dress variants, once like 20 something different covers for them. What do you think, Jack? I totally agree with both picks. Excellent picks. And be sure all of you out there in the Simplements Comics family are following and subscribing to Strange Tales to Collect, a brand new YouTube channel. They're doing an excellent job with some of their new videos. So make sure you are subscribed to them as well. Yes. And then one other comment we have was from Carter Lee. He said, hmm, my hot pick. Marvel Bronze Age Horror and his cold pick, DC Universe app. If you don't have it yet, might as well wait for WB streaming app because Swamp Thing is over, unfortunately. So, agree with this hot pick. We've talked on this channel about horror comics in general, especially Marvel Bronze. DC Universe app, I do have bones to pick with it, but there are some good shows on there for the time being. I do look forward to WB streaming app, but Titans was great. Swamp Thing was great. Doom Patrol was great. New season of Titans is getting ready to come out. So... There's some good shows on there, but overall, I agree. I'm not a big fan of the app and would like to see it reconfigured. Yeah, I totally agree, Brian. The Marvel Bronze Age stuff is hot because we know the MCU is definitely going horror with some of their upcoming movie releases. And, you know, as a subscriber to the DC app, I can't agree more. I will say I'm excited for the new season of Titans, but everything is just slow moving and I don't feel like you get your value on a month-to-month -month basis. And the person at the top number one spot through the list randomization and the winner of the CBSI swag hat and t-shirt is Jurassic Coast Comics with his comment, my personal bronze no one is talking about, Omega One, Hercules number one, Black Lightning number one, John Warlord of Mars, first appearance, Demon number one. He's got a plethora of picks in there, but 
great comment. And he's at the top of the list. What do you think about this, Jack? Well, I love all those books. I don't know if he's saying that they're hot or they're cold right now, but definitely some good buying opportunities in there. So I'd say it probably represents more of cold picks. But as we talk about on the show all the time, today's cold picks are tomorrow's hot picks. You want to buy when they're low and sell when they're high. It's all about that ROI. Or as we like to say, skating where the puck isn't. Congratulations to Jurassic Coast Comics. Email me at simplemanscomics at gmail.com. Get us your name and address. We will get that over to the CBSI swag guys, and they will get that shirt and hat out to you in the mail. So we're going to get into the first hot pick this week, starting with comicbookinvest.com. Indie Spotlight author, Andy Tomerlin. Hey, what's up, CBSI Nation? Andy here with the Indie Spotlight series. What's hot this week? Well, typically we see the one to two per store variants not doing a whole lot. Over the past two weeks, that's not the case. Uh, we saw Absolute Carnage come out last week, and the Premier variant, which was two per store, actually made the hot 10 list and is selling, I think last time I checked, 35 to $40 still. So definitely one to watch there. And this week you have Once in Future, Thank You variant from Boom. Boom is really good about doing these Thank You variants, per store variants uh, for their other titles, Angel, Buffy the Vampires later. Those are actually selling okay too. But this Once in Future one looks like it had a $215 sale off Midtown. Some say maybe not. They may have pulled it and put it in store. It's really hard to tell, uh, but there has been $80 sales on eBay, and right now they're listed at $100 on eBay. So one to two per store variants. Something to watch here over the last couple weeks, heating up a little bit. So there we have it, Jack. Andy with this hot pick. My hot pick was, of course, that he wasn't wearing a stupid Clemson shirt, but one to two per store variants. I like this pick, especially as he mentioned the last few weeks. We've seen scorchers in the market with, as he pointed out, the Absolute Carnage Premier variant. Now we're talking about that Once in Future Thank You variant. The Dan Moore cover, absolutely fantastic, right? I mean, I really enjoyed it because it's totally different than the preview. It's totally different than the regular cover. We're currently seeing it escalate on the secondary market. I'm anxious to see what the price is going for by the end of this weekend. But what do you think about this pick, Jack? Well, I love it. Andy mentioned the Absolute Carnage book. Hit the Hot 10 list this week. Um, we talked about it on Friday on the Hot 10 Comics show right here on the Simple Mints Comics YouTube channel. Um, and Marvel has done these in the past and they haven't really taken off. Boom has been releasing these for quite a while. And he mentioned Angel and Buffy. And it's been kind of a low-key winner. Um, we talked about earlier. We talk about this all the time on Simple Men's Comics YouTube channel. Zig when others zag. Skate where the puck isn't. All of these types of concepts. These books have been profitable. But the window has been short. You've got to move these books quick to maximize your money. Once in Future is a little different because I think Once in Future is a major, major independent spec book. It has been absolutely tearing up secondary market. And we recorded this video on Tuesday nights. And dealers who have started to get their one per store variants have started to list them on eBay. And we're seeing consistent sales of $65 to $70 on this book already. And time will tell by the time this video hits YouTube where those sales are. But I expect them only to go up. We saw Once in Future already go to third print, and I believe they just announced a fourth print for it. So this book is definitely hot. And also, if you watch my weekly picks, I misspoke on this thank you variant. I was talking about, I meant to talk about prices for that preview edition, and I quoted those prices for the thank you variant. So my mistake, got some comments on it, and they're totally right. I misspoke. And our next hot pick this week comes from Run the Tables author, Clint Jocelyn. Good afternoon, CBS Nation. This is Clint Jocelyn coming to you with my hot pick of the week. My hot pick of the week this week is Disney cartoon comics. Stuff like Aladdin, Darkwing Duck, Donald Duck, Disney Princess, Tangle, some of these Joba properties and or just these Disney comics in general, Mickey Mouse variants. I think that you've seen the shift in these moving up because number one, the print runs are small. Number two, you have a hunger coming for Disney Plus by a lot of different people. Unlike the stock, which is not doing very well, maybe it'll turn around, Disney stock, uh, the comics are doing really well. Maybe the stock will turn around as Disney Plus launches, but anyways, that's for another discussion. But if you look at some of these properties that always had a niche market of the Disney, even going back to older books, but let's talk specifically about modern right now. They are hot, and they are hot commodities. They have low print runs. They have variants that are very hot, hard to come after. I saw some Gargoyles books moving as of recent that have not had the traction that they do now. So I really think that these books are hot for a lot of reasons. They're fresh in mind. People are looking for them. So if you can pick these up cheap, 
and you can get a good deal on them, I'd pick up these Disney entities. There's always going to be a market for them. There always is, but right now, they're specifically hot. So that's my pick of the week this week, Disney Cartoon Comic properties. Talk soon. So Jack, there we have Clint's pick. He's talking about Disney cartoon comics, specifically modern comics. We all know some of those great Dell and Four Color Keys. We also know some of the Bronze Age Disney stuff. He's specifically talking about modern, which leads me to a lot of IDWs. I won't say so much the Joe Books comics, but IDW in general. I remember when they started relaunching like the Scrooge, the Mickey Mouse, I forget what it's called, but the Disney in general one. When they first launched, especially with Disneyland's Diamond Anniversary. They were putting out 1 in 25 variants. I was picking those up left and right. That's back when DCBS had good prices on variants. I'm talking like $10, $12, 1 in 25s. So I was definitely picking those up, sold a lot of them off. But you're seeing a trend of those pick up again. And there's no doubt, I, if you watch this channel, you know I'm a huge Disney fan. Love Disney, go to Disney World a lot. But what do you think about this pick, Jack? Well, Brian, and you know, and the viewers out there know, I love IDW. I love Boom, who previously had a, a relationship with Disney and was releasing Disney books. Um, but I have to say that I have had a hard time of late moving some of these books at the prices that I'd like to get for them. Um, you mentioned kind of the early stages when these books were red hot, and I think speculator attention has dropped. So the only people that are really picking these books up at this point are the hardcore Disney fans like yourself. And while they are out there, they have, are not as prevalent in within the comic market. So a lot of these books, they're selling. They're making great ROI, but they're selling slowly. So I'm still picking up Disney 1 in 10 incentives from IDW. Um, I'm still pulling out rare variants from the different boom runs. Uh, I tried to make a nice play with some of the Lion King releases that came out around the original Lion King movie with this upcoming Lion King movie, and they just didn't really sell the way I would have hoped. Uh, so, you know... I definitely think there's a trend where more and more people are becoming aware of them, like Clint mentioned with the Disney app. I just don't know if you're going to really get the sell through that you're looking for. So if you do it, kind of pick your spots and uh, try to get that good ROI. But if you're going heavy on it, you may end up sitting with a lot of these sitting in your eBay store. Right. And I got just two more things to say because I'm a Disney fan. This is one of my favorite comics. I do have a Beauty and the Beast 9-8 signed by Paige O'Hare and Robbie Benson the voices of Belle and Beast. This is one of my favorite comics. Not a speculation comic. This is just one of those PC gem in my collection. Then the second thing I want to say, if you are going to speculate on Disney comics, make sure you pre-order them. Those books, are a lot of those are all ages books, so don't go out there and rob kids out of books at the LCS because you think you want to spec on them. If you're going to do it, make sure you pre-order and let the kids have their books. So thank you, Clint, for that pick, and we're going to move on to the next pick in this week's hot list, and it comes from the Reading Pile author, Dan Piercy. Dan Piercy of the Reading Pile here. With Dead End Kids being an absolute monster last week, I wanted to talk a little bit about the publishing company Source Point Press. They put out some quality books like Samurai Grandpa, Ogre, I think fellow panelist Andy Tomberlin had a little something to do with this variant coming out. Day 165, you guys remember The Rejected. All of these books reach that magical $20 price point on the secondary market the week of release, which makes me think that SourcePoint Press books are a company to keep your eye on now in the future. They're doing great things. And I wanted to close with, uh, I did an, uh, an interview last year with uh, the creator and author of Day 165, Tony Doug Wright. It's on the front page of CBSI as a flashback feature. In it, Tony gives a great written history of SourcePoint Press as well as the books he's put out for them. So that's my pick. I'm sticking to it. SourcePoint Press books. See ya. So there's Dan's pick. We're talking about SourcePoint Press. As we always mention on this show, it is the hot and cold trends in the comic community. No denying SourcePoint Press. Every time they put a title out, it is hot. Currently, Dead End Kids came out last week and it's still selling high on the secondary market, right, Jack? Absolutely. I think first off, SourcePoint Press is putting out quality books. Secondly, these books are tough for most speculators and collectors to find. That was the common theme we heard with Dead End Kids. We heard it with Ogre, we heard it with The Rejected, and we heard it with Day 165. And these are all releases that hit as high as $20 on the secondary market, at least for a period of time. But like most independent books, the key is to get in and get out a lot of times because these prices tend to drop as heat from the pre-release and post-release 
starts to wear off. Although fantastic stories and love a lot of these creators, it is just what we're covering and that's the market trends. And for some reason, independent market trends, they rise and then they fall just as fast. But as always, those leave for buying opportunities because we saw Ogre rise and fall. But guess what? We got a new Ogre series coming out and I'm sure there's going to be some residual heat on that, right Jack? Definitely. Be on the lookout for Ogres coming from Sourceport Press, the second volume to that original Ogre arc. And we know how well Ogre did, and I expect Ogres to do kind of just as well. So a great pick from Dan Piercy, and we're going to roll right into Mike Morello's hot pick, author of the Cover Tunes article on comicbookinvest.com. Hey, everybody. Mike Morello from CBSI's Cover Tunes with my hot pick for the week. And this week I'm picking something that's in tandem with my pick from last week, which was Bronze Age Marvel Keys. Um, but this week's is uh, sort of its own animal, and it is the trio of Galactus and Silver Surfer books. Um, This, uh, number 48, number 49, and number 50. Um, And I add number 50 in mostly because it's just sort of part of the set, as people see, but it's also a really classic and iconic cover. Uh, Again, like last week, I think that the conversation is very similar in that these are already huge keys, and they have been for a while. But the thing is, is that everyone's turning their attention to Fantastic Four and X-Men stuff right now, um, and prices are going up like crazy. Prices on these books have gone up double in the last year or so, and um, they're getting harder and harder to get, uh, really in any grade, let alone high grade. Um, and high grade, you're going to pay through the nose for. Um, but I think this may be the last time that you can get these for, for some decent prices, especially in mid-grade mostly because there has been no real announcement yet. People are rabid for Galactus and Silver Surfer to be done well in a film, and I think as soon as we get confirmation that these characters are going to be in a film and or we see any image or trailer or casting or anything, these books are going to see another huge, huge hike, and I really don't think they're going to come back down. They're blue chip keys, they're going to stay that way, and they're going to get harder and harder to get. So for right now, my hot pick is Fantastic Four, 48, 49, and 50, uh, First Galactus and Silver Surfer. Thanks, everybody. So there we have Adam Curry. I mean, Mike Morello. Sorry, MTV hat. I thought it was Adam Curry for a second. But we're talking about Fantastic Four. We're talking about that run from issues number 48 to 51. Those are already keys in their own right. But as he mentioned, if these get picked up, at, not if, when they show up in the MCU, these are going to go up into the stratosphere. But what do you think about this pick, Jack? Well, I totally agree with this pick. Fantastic Four has seen depressed values over the last several years and is now red hot due to the fact that Kevin Feige dropped Fantastic Four coming to the MCU soon at San Diego Comic-Con as part of his Hall H announcements. Also, Silver Surfer is on the minds of a lot of speculators with Silver Surfer Black written by Donnie Cates being red hot. And I think a lot of people are anticipating that Silver Surfer MCU appearance. So these books are getting a lot of speculator attention. Now, they always had value, but of late, they've seen escalating prices, and they're getting to a point where they're going to be out of range of a lot of collectors and speculators. And we're going to keep moving right along into the last pick on the hot list this week, and we're talking about Dollar Ben Digging author Peter Renna. What's up, everybody? So, my hot pick this week is something that, by all rights, could have been hot last week. Ever since two weeks ago when uh, Ava DuVernay uh, announced that uh, Darkseid and the Female Furies would be part of her New Gods movies, those uh, Fourth World books have been uh, moving pretty good. So uh, anything Darkseid, his first appearance, whether you are a fan of the Jimmy Olsen 134 or you're in the park of the Forever People number one as his first appearance, either of those books are moving pretty good and uh, getting you a good price. Uh, I personally like uh, this New Gods number two. It's a uh, yeah, I got him right up here on the cover. It's more the dark side we know. It's not just this like uh, a wacky Raceland uh, appearances where he's on little TV screens and those other books. But uh, so I like that New Gods two personally. Uh, I don't have any of the Mister Miracle books one, four, five, or six that are all moving pretty good. I just haven't found them yet at a good price. So I'm just going to show you my uh, Adam Hughes Mister Miracle. What is this? Nineteen. I just like this cover, so I figured I'd show you it to you. Uh, But you also have to guess that uh, part of her movie is going to probably put it into a more modern world, so that uh, 2017 Tom King run is probably something that they're going to pull heavily from, I would guess, for a New Gods movie. It will help them keep the budget down uh, quite a bit, give a bit of that fantastical world mixed in with the real world. So, uh, again, New Gods, that's what I think is hot this week. Jack, New Gods, hot, 
hot, hot, hot, just as Peter Renna said. We've talked about it on this channel before, but those New Gads books right now are scorching up on the secondary market. But what do you think about this pick, Jack? Well, I've long been an advocate of, of these books and this series. Um, we've seen what The Eternals is doing, and I think New Gods is going to come right behind it. Now, these books are heating up, but I don't think they've reached the levels that they have the potential to. So I still think there's a lot of buying opportunity here. And my favorite part of what Peter said is, while, yes, these Mr. Miracle Volume 1 run books are great, and while, yes, Forever People, the Jimmy Olsen books, those are great. I think there's a lot of meat on the bone with the current Tom King run, especially since he's writing the series. Now, he showed that number one, and I think that number one is great. But another one to keep your eye on is that number 12, where the cover's all black and simply just says Dark Side is. And I say that because the director, when I asked on Twitter if Dark Side would appear, simply just put Dark Side is. And I think that that is going to be a major thing in within the movie, is kind of that the way Darkseid will almost be viewed as the Thanos of the DC Universe. And I'm real bullish on Darkseid, and I think that there's no way that Tom King doesn't pull from his own run in writing this movie. So while I think there'll be heavy Jack Kirby influence, I think a lot of it will come from the modern stuff, as well as keep an eye on those key variant issues featuring Darkseid on the cover. As we saw with Thanos, everything Thanos popped off when he showed up in the movies, and I think Darkseid has that type of potential. Definitely agree with everything you just said, Jack. And thank you, Peter, for that hot pick. That closes us out for the hot list this week. But don't go anywhere, because we are going right into the cold list, starting with Run the Tables author Clint Jocelyn. Good afternoon, CBS I Nation. This is Clint Jocelyn coming to you from San Francisco Airport business trip to get my cold pick of the week. And my cold pick of the week this week is SS slabs, so yellow labeled slabs. Uh, it's interesting, a couple years ago, Signatures meant, meant a lot on slabs, especially at 9A, were valuable. Even had more of a financial gain than the regular blue label, but what we've seen is a shift in that. And that's for a couple of reasons. Number one, I think autographs of artists are becoming less and less important. It may be more important to get an actress or actor. And what I mean is if you look at Wonder Woman books, for instance, Jenny Prince is a hot artist. She does very well work. But her signature is not worth as much on a SS slab as it would be, let's say, a Gail Godot or somebody else uh, that plays Wonder Woman. And granted, we see the reasons why that is and why it would pay more because of who the actress is. But I think that what you're seeing just in general across the board is the signature matters nowadays and or the book matters nowadays. What book it is, what issue it is, is there a key appearance? Is it, some, is it signed by somebody who makes that key appearance relevant beyond just the artist or the writer? So my cold pick of the week this week is SS Books. However, I do think right now you're more inclined for purchases and financial reasons to get the blue labels. It just seems to make more sense when you look at sales. Will this turn around? Probably at some point. This is all cyclical. But for right now, yellow SS labels are down. Talk to you guys soon. So we are talking cold this week. Signature Series SS Books. CGC, CBCS, I don't think he differentiated, did he, Jack? No, I didn't seem right. to. He brought up also a good point of not so much artists and authors, but actual celebrities signing this book. But I also think another reason why those books are so much more valuable is there's a, there's a scarcity issue with there. You'll get a lot more books signed by the authors and the artists of those books than you will from actors and actresses portraying characters, especially some of those great books, those cheap dynamite. Like, if you were to get those... Keanu Reeves' John Wick variants with his picture on it and got that SS, that's one I think would be a winner because it's a low buy-in, which we kind of talked about on this channel before, Jack. But I like the idea of getting celebrity signing over authors and artists, but there's also some of those harder-to-find author and artist books that are still hot if you can get it SS. But we've, we've discussed this topic before on Simple Men's Comics, and what do you think about this, Jack? Right. We talked about this when we talked about the Gail Gadot signatures um, on, on, I think it was Dan Piercy's pick for, you know, as a hot pick. And definitely um, actor signatures are tough, but it also depends on which actor. Uh, I was at a convention this weekend where Michael Rooker was there. Michael Rooker is amazing, obviously, Walking Dead fame, Guardians of the Galaxy, but he does a lot of conventions. So it's not extremely difficult to get his signature. Someone like Ben Affleck, Gail Gadot, those are tougher signatures. You mentioned Keanu Reeves. That'd be a real tough one because I don't think he's doing Comic-Con signings. So you have to have somebody with you to witness it or you have to be a witness yourself, which opens up issues in and of itself. 
So those are difficult signatures to get. So they're always going to command major prices. Um, I think as far as regular gold SS labels, when we're talking about, you know, artists and creator signatures, I think the key is what books are you getting signed? The books aren't spiking because of the signature. They're spiking because of the book. So getting a key issue signed by a creator, a writer, especially one who's a regular on the con scene, isn't really adding any value and can cost you money because a lot of times you're charged for this right to get that signature. But a little search on eBay and you look at someone like Art Germ, Art Germ signatures are regularly going for $80 to $100. And many of these books are $3 DC cover Bs, which we know are dead cold on the market. So if you can get that book for $3, pay $20 for a signature, pay another $20 to get the book graded, and you're in it for $43, there is ROI there for you where you're doubling or more your profit. And at that point, it's still something that I think is good for a business person, a speculator, an investor to be able to flip and make money. But if you're looking at a key issue, an issue like, you know, a, a first appearance or a variant cover that's already booming in the secondary market, regardless of whether it's signed or not, you're not adding value by having the signature. People want the book in and of itself. So my suggestion would be if you're still trying to play the SS game, pick those cheap books, get them signed and add value to them by the signature. You're just not adding value to a book that's already hot. Great points, Jack, and I definitely see why Clinton has this on the cold list with some great buying opportunities. Now, real quick, before we get into the next pick on the cold list this week, if you're enjoying this content, make sure you click that thumbs up button for us. And with that being said, we're going to roll into the next pick on the cold list this week, and it comes from Reading Pile author Dan Piercy. My cold pick this week is a book I really enjoyed a lot. It's Dead Rabbit by Image Comics. Now, if you remember, many months ago, this book was recalled because of copyright infringement from a New York City restaurant, also with the name Dead Rabbit. The prices went nuclear on this book, but they since have dropped down. You can get uh, the first and second issue in sets for $10 or $5 an issue. Take your pick. What's interesting is Dead Rabbit is returning in October as a title called Dead Eyes. So... Will those first two issues be straight up reprints of Dead Rabbit? I'm not sure, but I think so. I'm guessing. So it should be interesting to see what happens to this book in the coming months. This was a great book that myself and others really liked. Uh, a great little crime and cars book. So that's my pick for this week. Cold pick, cold pick, cold pick, Dead Rabbit. See ya. Dan's talking about this book. I remember... When that issue first came out and this book was canceled, so to say, because of the name, it got hot. People were hunting for it left and right. People were buying up variants for it left and right. And then it's kind of cooled off since. And as he mentioned, the book is coming back out under a different name, which reminds me of DC Comics back in the day with Collider being renamed to FBP or Federal Bureau of Physics. That book had the same trend like this one where it got hot once it was renamed. Everyone's buying it up left and right. And I still have about 10 of them sitting in a short box that don't sell for crap. Do you see this following that trend or do you think this is a buying opportunity? Yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure because I also am sitting on some colliders as well. So, you know, I look at this and I say when Dead Eyes comes out, I could see um, Dead Rabbit kind of being thought of as a scarce variant and people going for that cover and wanting that cover. But I could also see the opposite happening. Because especially, let's say, what's best case scenario for independent title? Like it's optioned for a movie. It's not going to be called Dead Rabbit. It's going to be called Dead Eyes, which would make the Dead Eyes version uh, the more independent title. So I guess if you're a speculator, my real question would be, why didn't you sell this book when it was hot? Why are you still setting on this book? Now, Dan, he's a reader. He's a, the reading pile, of course, from comicbookinvest.com. Um, so I totally get why he held on to this book. And this has been a book that he has really championed for a long time. And you didn't know whether this book was going to come back out under a new title. So for the PC, I get why you'd hold on to it. But if you're a speculator, the time to sell was when this book was peaking around $25 to $30. Um, at this point, it's anyone's guess what's going to happen. I could see it getting hot again, but I could see it being dead cold uh, going forward. Uh, either way, I'd be on the lookout for dead eyes. There was a lot of reader buzz behind the original Dead Rabbit series, and I expect that to transfer over to Dead Eyes. It's one I'll have my eye on for sure. And also, you guys watching right now, let us know in the comments of this video, what do you think about this book? Do you think it'll peak again, or do you think the opportunity has passed it by? 
With that being said, we're moving to the next cold pick this week, and it comes from Mike Morello. Hello again, everybody. Mike Morello, CBSI's Cover Tunes, and it is cold pick time. And this week's cold pick is a bit of a personal heartbreaker because it's one of my favorite books, um, and it is monstrous. I don't really understand why this book is cold, but it, but it certainly is. There seems to be no buzz about this book right now for some reason. Um, it won all kinds of Eisner Awards. Uh, it is a beautiful, beautiful read. Um, fantastic world building and characterization. The art inside is gorgeous. Every panel could be a cover. And yet, right now, there's just no buzz around the book. You can get that first print that I just showed you for 35 bucks, 25 bucks if you're shrewd about it. Um, even that rare second print, which is really tough to get in high grade because it always has color transfer from the copy that was before it in the stack. Um, even that book, I just got a copy of that last week for 30 bucks, which I realize is a fantastic price, but there are currently copies on eBay for 40 and 50, which if you followed that book, you couldn't touch that for less than 100 bucks less than a year ago. Um, I've got to think that this book has got to be made into something at some point. It's too good. It's too popular. Too many people are still reading it. It's perfectly suited for a movie or a television show. Um, and right now, it is at its rock bottom. It's cold at the moment. And if you've wanted copies of, of these books, now is the time to get them. Even number two and three and some of the early numbers were $10 and $15 books at one point, And now they're back down to cover price. So now is the time to grab these before there's any kind of an announcement for this, because I think there's got to be at some point. Um, but for now, Monstrous is cold. Thanks again, everybody, as always. Have a great week. Two things about this pick, Jack. One, I think it definitely represents a buying opportunity that we discuss. But this is one of those books where I think that hiatus in between arcs actually kind of hurt it this time. It's not coming back as strong as it was. The Mike makes a lot of great points. The story's fantastic. I actually love Sonata Takeda's art, but as he said, these books are on a decline, which makes for a good buying opportunity, and I think this story is too strong to stay cold for too long. What do you think, Jack? Well, yeah, and I agree with what you said, too, about the hiatuses. Um, we've seen that with Saga and Southern Bastards, two books that were red hot on the secondary market that took long hiatuses, and that has definitely affected those secondary market values. Um, I think this is also just indicative of the spec cycle because, you know, once a series gets beyond a certain point, the only people truly paying attention are readers until you get that option news. So I totally agree that Monstrous is, is kind of set up to be optioned at some point. But until that announcement, you're going to see those depressed values. That's pretty typical of what happens with the independent comics market. And, this, you know, the second that announcement hits and it's all over the Internet and everyone's getting those alerts – that at that point, we're going to see spikes in value. And that's just kind of indicative of the, of the independent comics market. It's kind of the game you have to play. So you shouldn't be buying when those prices are skyrocketing. You should be waiting until this point. And if you believe in Monstrous, now is the time to buy. Right. I like the point you made about indicative to the spec market, especially as it gets higher in those issue numbers. But usually also as it gets higher in those issue numbers, it makes those issue number ones, number two, especially that second printing he was talking about, more valuable where the speculators go back and get them because they're enjoying the story and they see value in it. But Mike's mentioning even those issues are kind of low right now. So this is definitely a buy-in opportunity. I agree with everything you said, and I agree with everything Mike Morello said, and that's why it's on the cold list this week. And moving right along in the cold list this week, we get the usual suspects author, Peter Renna. So, my cold pick this week is more of a buying opportunity, I would think. Uh, now, Red Sony's got a couple of current series with some nice variants and those uh, Perillo covers coming out. Those are, you know, pretty good, but people have forgotten about those earlier Dynamite runs. I mean, I mean, everybody knows to grab those Frizan covers, but it's not just those uh, variant covers and B covers, but you got to look out for those RRP, those Retailer Incentives. Uh, sometimes those pop up on eBay, and uh, their prices are just really low. You can catch them... Uh, you know, pretty cheap, and some of them are really high incentives, like one in three hundreds, one in one hundreds, uh, and a lot of times they're just uh, recolored versions of the uh, regular cover, one of the regular covers, or uh, virgin versions. So something like this, uh, this cover of Adam Hughes in the first series from Dynamite. This is number eight. Uh, this is a red version of the cover. I think it's a one in one hundred. Uh, I actually picked this one up for not too bad a price. The only ones on eBay now are pretty high, so I'm not saying look and buy it at those prices. But, uh, like I said, keep your eye out. If you look and search for those RRPs in the sold prices, you can see a lot of those are getting snuck for under 20 bucks. And, again, different covers, different artists, but uh, they're worth taking a look at. So, uh, you never know. A lot of people aren't looking, so you might be able to uh, sneak one in for pretty cheap. So, I'm making that my cold pick this week. Red Sonya. This is one character, Jack, that 
I think flip-flops between hot and cold. There's no telling. Week in, week out. Right now she's cold. A couple weeks ago she was hot, especially with the Kendrick Lim variants and other variants that came out. But that cycle's calmed down now. And now we're seeing on the cold with a lot of great buying opportunities. What do you think about Peter's pick, Jack? I actually like Peter's pick. I would argue that Red Sonia on the whole is actually hot because if you look at Conan 23 and Conan 24, as well as Red Sonia number one from those original Marvel series, those are going up in value and consistently increasing bidders and getting more action on buy it nows. Having said that, what he's really speaking on is those RRPs, those high ratio variants. And Dynamite's kind of a victim of their own monster that they've created. They get so much great cover art um, from so many different artists that it's hard for anyone to stand out over a period of time. I myself am sitting on a 1 in 100 Jim Lee RRP that I haven't been able to move and get maximized value on. So I think Peter's really kind of hitting the nail on the head where there's a lot of underserved variants from those Dynamite runs, especially those high ratio variants, that if at some point Red Sonja gets adapted, whether or not Dynamite lets Marvel use her through a Conan movie or whether in some other deal that Dynamite's able to score with a, a uh, movie production company, then it's absolutely plausible that we will see these variants go up in value. But it's one of those things. There's just so many of them. It's like, which one will get that sort of attention? We talked about Adam Hughes. We talked about Jim Lee, Luisio Perillo, uh, Michael Linzer. There's so many out there, whether Alex Ross, and I can c keep going. Uh, real heavyweight artists, and I just think that that kind of waters down the value of all of them. So if I was investing in Red Sonja, I would look at Conan 23, Conan 24, and uh, that Red Sonja number one from 1977. I think that those are the ones where my attention would really be focused on. I agree. I think Dynamite cannibalizes its own market with all their, with all their covers. Plus, they usually will have a trade dress of it and then a virgin variant of it. But one other issue that I love that I don't ever see on the market, I know Mike Morales talked about it on this list before, but that's that Red Sonja number one, that Joe Jusco, what is it, one in 75 variant? Love yeah. that. Still weren't in my collection, but I'm trying to get it for a decent price. But agree, a lot of buying opportunities out there, especially for Red Sonja fans, because I believe we're going to see Conan in another movie. And I think we're going to see Red Sonja too. And with the last pick on the cold list, the man we haven't seen or heard from tonight, and we are talking about the mass speculator himself, Topher S., author of the real True First article on comicbookinvest.com. All right, welcome back. This is the mass speculator here with your cold pick of the week. I'm going to make this thing short and sweet. I'm not changing my shirt, you dumb puppet. More people than Dan Piercy and Dean Piercy's comics are going to know who this is. All right, Doom Patrol, Frozen Solid. And knowing this illustrates an important point. Just because your show is critically acclaimed and lives up to the hype does not always mean a boon for fans, collectors, and speculators. Just imagine if the boys had been on Netflix. Keeps from that series are slowly building, with issue one now selling over a hundred. Could have had that book four weeks ago for 30 bucks or less. But imagine if the show had been on Netflix. There are some incredible Doom Patrol books out there from all ages that are doing jack. Give me a little DP on a legit service, please. That's it, I'm out! So Doom Patrol, Jack, we talk a lot on Simple Man's Comics about how TV shows on Netflix and other streaming services help these books, but the DC Universe app hasn't seemed to do any favors for Doom Patrol. Now, don't get me wrong, My Greatest Adventure number 80 is always going to be a key comic book and will always see value, but there's a lot of other great Doom Patrol comics like Topher kind of mentioned, that didn't see any rise in value. A lot of people talked about how great the show was, but it didn't reflect so in the comic books. What do you think, Jack? Well, absolutely. You know, and, and like you mentioned, My Greatest Adventure, you know, that's a book that was already hot, was already an important book prior to the show being made. It was already a major key for most DC Comics collectors. Um, but all that new Young Animal stuff that was put out by Gerard Way, ironically of Umbrella Academy, didn't see any sort of residual heat. And I really think that there's two things to look at. First off, you have the spec cycle. The show came out. It, there was a boom in some of the, the Doom Patrol stuff. And now that that show is over and we're all waiting to see what's going to happen with the app going forward with the WB deal and everything with that, there's kind of that lull in between season one and season two. And that naturally drops prices. But also, 
I don't think that they got really the attention on that app that they had aimed for. I don't think as many people saw that show as, say, you know, Umbrella Academy on Netflix or even The Boys on Amazon. So because of that, so many people are still unaware of how great a show Doom Patrol was. And you're seeing the same thing with Swamp Thing and you're seeing the same thing with Titans. So I think that is really the major contributing factor why we haven't seen any of that heat rub off on any of those other books or variants, any of the new modern releases. But when that show was first announced, we did see a lot of those first appearances end up on the CBSI Hot 10 Comics list. Um, And so there was attention on this at one point. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with the spec cycle. As critically acclaimed as that series was, nobody's talking about it, critics included, at this juncture. And right now, that's why this book and this this pick ends up being a cold pick. Right. That's another important thing to notice, just as you said. The highest rise we saw was when the show was announced. That's when you saw the biggest rises in the books. So often you get asked, should I, should I sell or hold? And we always say sell when the announcement's made because it's usually the highest you'll see it. Now, yes, there are some outliers out there that books will rise eventually even after the show or movies. But the odds of that are small. Eight times out of ten, you're going to make most of your money when the announcement's actually made. Don't you think, Jack? Absolutely. My strategy for speculation is to get out when the profit's good. And I don't worry if a book goes up after I make a sale because, like you said, eight times out of ten, that's not really going to be the case. And so when an announcement gets made, if I can make good profit on a book, I'm happy to sell and then put my money into the next project. But a lot of speculators, they want to hold out to see if there gets any more heat when the show comes out, will people like the show? And you're taking a major risk at that point. Not every show ends up even being popular. And what if the first episode comes out and people hate the show? Or a situation like this where people love the show, but not enough people watched it. So, and then there's a situation where even if people watch it and they love the show, the spec cycle eventually brings the book down while people start paying attention to other books because there's always announcements being made for future series. So my suggestion to everybody in CBSI Nation and Simple Men's Comics family is when you get that opportunity, if you're a speculator, if you're a reseller, we're not talking to collectors out there, but if you get an opportunity to make money, make profit, and you're happy with the ROI, you make that sale and you don't look back. Don't worry about what could have been. And another thing is... It's your risk. You're the one to put money into it. Don't worry about asking others' opinions unless they put money in the book for you. You're the one that's making the profit or the loss. Do what you're comfortable with and then move on. Like he said, don't regret it. Just move on to the next book because there's always that what if that comes. You made a profit. You put money in your pocket. That's what you intended to do. So move on to the next one like Jack said. We have reached our hot and cold list and we're going to bring it up on the screen right now. You might notice... Hot picks, we don't have as many picks this week. And the cold pick, we actually have an extra pick. We do have some people on vacation. It is the end of summertime. People with families, kids getting ready to go back to school, making the most out of it. But I think this is still a great list. What do you think, Jack? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and while, yes, the the list may be more balanced between hot and cold, I actually kind of like that because the reality of the situation is these hot books you should be looking to sell, these cold books you should be looking to buy, and all we're doing with this kind of a list is giving you more opportunities of books to look at buying. So I like the balance within the list, and I think the picks individually in and of themselves are some really good picks and some things that aren't being talked about in the market. And that is the point of the hot and cold show. Not to give you that as cherry pick, buy this issue, buy that issue, sell that issue. Instead, give you those overarching trends that are happening on the secondary market within comics. So there you have it, guys. Hot and cold list for August 14th, 2019. Let us know what you think about the list. What are your hot picks and cold picks? And we will feature your comments on this show. And again, make sure you click that thumbs up button. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to this channel so you'll always be notified when future content drops. Such as we have another show coming up tomorrow night, don't we, Jack? Absolutely. Tomorrow night at 9 p.m. is the premiere of the CBSI Bolo Show, where we talk about the hottest releases on New Comic Book Day. And they are the releases that you guys are talking about out there on social media. And we're going to discuss how they're performing, what's hot, what's not, and everything in between. We also have on Friday the CBSI Hot 10 Comics List. This is the list put together by Ben Stein, writer from ComicBookInvest.com, which gives you the overview of the hottest selling back issues on the comic market. Also, we recently dropped a new Indie Spotlight Series episode where we talked to the creators of Blue Bastion, a brand new Indiegogo campaign 
which gives you guys a chance to get in on the ground floor, investing in the production of a book and get some exclusive comics that will only be available to those who contribute to the Indiegogo. So the Blue Bastion video is available now on the channel. Bolo Show is coming up tomorrow night and Friday. We have the Hot 10 Comics list. Always content on this channel. So if you aren't, make sure you're subscribed and you'll get those notifications. I'm Brian Wood with Jack DeMeo, and we'll see you next week on the next episode of the Hot and Cold Show. I was found here. You come around.